Today for our midweek, we are going to celebrate the week of Christian unity. Let us begin. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this year the theme of week of prayer for Christian unity is Abide in my love and you shall bear much fruit. It is the great desire of God expressed by Jesus that we might come to him and abide in him. He waits for us tirelessly, hoping that united to him in love, we will bear fruit that will bring life to all. Faced with the difference of the other, we risk withdrawing into ourselves and seeing only that which separates us. But let us listen to how Christ calls us to abide in his love and so bear much fruit. We remember the call of Christ. We turn to his love, who is the center of our life. For the path of unity begins in our intimate relationship with God. Abiding in his love strengthens the desire to seek unity and reconciliation with others. God opens us up to those who are different from us. This is an important fruit, a gift of healing for the divisions within us, between us and in the world. Lord, you are the vine dresser who cares for us with love. You call on us to see the beauty of each branch united to the vine, the beauty of each person, and yet too often the differences in others make us afraid. We withdraw into ourselves. Our trust in you is forsaken. Enmity develops between us. Come and direct our hearts toward you once again. Grant us to live out our forgiveness so that we may be together and praise your name. We're delighted to have Priscilla Landis with us as our musician today, and we will continue with Must Be the Tie That Binds. <laughs> scripture for the day is from the 15th chapter of the gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself, Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, 
Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments, so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we are in the middle of our week of prayer for Christian unity, beginning January 18th with the Confession of St. Peter and extends until January 25th, the Festival of the Conversion of St. Paul. Unity is the theme for this week, especially for us as Americans. Monday, we had the Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service. And it was a time for us as America to remember the long fight that America has undergone for equal rights among all of the races. All that has occurred and all that is still needing to happen for equal justice and for opportunity for all. We recognize all the progress that has been made and the unfinished labor that we continue to endure as we have people of every skin color having the same rights. Also, as I record this today, we are just a couple hours away from the inauguration of our 46th president, Joe Biden, and Vice President Kamala Harris. I think the lack of unity takes apart the first name of our country, United States. Instead of unity this day, there is much tension. There is grief over the pandemic, over 400,000 dead Americans and over 2 million dead in the world. Our nation's capital has become a fortress this day. And we have continuing threats of violence in the very citadels of our government. We as a country are deeply divided. We are states not united. We are divided politically, policy-wise, and we have a lack of confidence in many ways, even to our own government institutions. The new administration has much work to do and much healing of souls before we can live ever again as a United States. Final unity is also recognized as we as Christians gather together in this week of prayer of Christian unity. And we have some beautiful imagery in the lesson that I read to you from the 15th chapter of John, part of Jesus' final words to his disciples. And it gives a wonderful comparison that our God is the vine grower, Jesus is the vine, and we live one with another as the branches. I thought about this as one of the things I enjoy doing is walking my dog. And even in late January, you can see some buds beginning in the trees. You can also, if you kick open the, uh, the dried leaf carpet from the leaves that have fallen from the year before, you also can begin to see some green in the ground. Sap is flowing. It is a harbinger and a promise of spring. We have that same kind of hope and promise in our unity. God blesses our work when we work together as sisters and brothers in Christ. And we are bound together 
on one true vine by the saving act of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who promises, whosoever believes in me will have eternal life. But it's not just a promise in the world to come following our death, but it's also a promise here and now, that together we can bear much fruit. We are fed together by the same sap of the Holy Spirit, if you will, a sap that runs through us, that nourishes us, that moves us, that calls us to action as God's people. In regard to the fruit of the Spirit, that we will bear much fruit, we certainly have different gifts in our church, as a congregation, as a church body, and as Christians throughout the world. And it reminds me sometimes like the rose in a garden. One row has one vegetable, the next row has another. As our various Christian bodies come together, we are different, but they all come together to nourish. We are different, and that we can celebrate. We're different in our theology, we're different in our worship styles, we're different in our music, our art, and even our church architecture. We're different in the ways that we care for others and we show Christ to the world. But as we do those things, Christ promises we will bear much fruit and we will proclaim his glory to the world. So I pray that we may abide in Christ because there, there's much to pull us away. There's lots of temptations. And many people don't have the luxuries that we do, that they, they're always working for the very necessities of life. And we're all threatened by many distractions, by challenges, and we're always wanting to be the one on the right side, even to the other. So I pray that in this week of Christian unity, we may have opportunities to move closer to each other, to move toward rather than away from people who are different than ourselves. That we might take the time to listen to their story, to draw closer to one another, to draw closer to one another because we are all children of God and each of us are an expression of God's creation. Oftentimes when I, when I do a marriage service and the husband and the wife seem very different, I always tell them that's a good thing. And in my own marriage it's that way too. I think many times we marry what we need rather than marry someone similar to us. We see attributes and gifts that we don't have, that we wish we could have, so we have it in our partner. I think that's what we're called to do as Christian people, to recognize our many partners and to seek out their gifts. And we have so much more when we're together. So together, let us go and bear fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit that will last. And what we do in God's name as we spread his kingdom we are blessed, and we do indeed extend the gospel. Amen. I invite you to join now in prayer with the prayer responses. God of love, through Christ you said to us, you did not choose me, but I chose you. You seek us. You invite us to receive your friendship and abide in it. Teach us to respond more deeply to this invitation and grow in a life that is ever more complete. The joy of our heart is in God. God of life, you call us to be praised in the midst of the world and to welcome one another as a gift of your grace. May your loving gaze, which rests upon each person, open us to receive each other just as we are. The joy of our heart is in God. God who gathers, you knit us together as one vine in your Son, Jesus. May your loving Spirit abide in us wherever your people are gathered. Grant that together we might celebrate you with joy. The joy, joy of our, our heart, heart is in God. God. God of the one vineyard, you call us to abide in your love in all that we do and say. Touched by your goodness, grant us to be a reflection of that love in our homes and workplaces. May we pave the way for bridging rivalries and overcoming tensions. The joy of our heart, heart is in God. Holy Spirit, you create and recreate the church in all places. Come and whisper in our hearts the prayer which Jesus addressed to his Father on the eve of his passion. 
that they may all be one, so that the world may believe. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, light the fire of your love in us, so that suspicions, contempt, and misunderstanding cease in the church. May the walls that separate us fall. Lord, Lord have mercy. God of life, you have created every human being in your image and likeness. We sing your praise for the gift of our many cultures, expressions of faith, traditions, and ethnicities. Grant us the courage always to stand against injustice and hatred based on race, class, gender, religion, and fear of those not like ourselves. God of love, in you is our hope. Merciful God, you have shown us in Christ that we are one in you. Teach us to use this gift in the world so that believers of all faiths in every country may be able to listen to each other and live in peace. God of love, in you is our hope. Jesus, you came into the world and shared fully in our humanity. You know the hardships of life for people who suffer in so many ways. May the spirit of compassion move us to share our time, life, and goods with those in need. God, God of love, love, in you is our hope. Holy Spirit, you hear the fury of your wounded creation and the cries of those already suffering from climate change. Guide us toward new behaviors. May we learn to live in harmony as part of your creation. God of love, in you is our hope. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Be one, so that the world may believe. Abide in his love. Go into the world and hear the fruits of his love. 
May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in faith, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.